Hey you guys, welcome back. Today I am filming, gosh that fire is loud. It, oh, blah, blah. Just in case we have anybody new here, the Reader's Digest convent, blah, blah, blah. Well, this is going well. I have seriously been filming for like three and a half minutes and I maybe have like 20 seconds of footage that I'm actually going to use. <laughs> I'm that person who's gonna lose slow. Not even steady, just slow. <laughs> okay, you guys, full disclosure. I've tried to make this video twice now <laughs> and I just have not really cared for it. I even made one yesterday and when I got into editing it, I just felt like I was a rambling mess and so I've been trying to do it again today to no avail. So I'm gonna try it one more time because third time's the charm, am I right? Okay, you guys, the order of business today is to give you a wrap up for my most recent 10 day challenge and also do an October weight loss recap. So if you're new here, Reader's Digest condensed version is, I'm a person who has been in the overweight category for a lot of my adult life. I've done a lot of yo-yo dieting up and down in the same 20 pound range. And I finally, about three years ago, got a handle on it. I lost 25 pounds and I have been able to keep that off until last summer, about five months ago, whenever I had surgery and we just had a lot of stress over the summer and I gained about 10 pounds back. So I have been trying to chip away at that little by little and I have been sort of uh, changing my mindset about weight loss in, in, in general and nutrition and exercise and all of that stuff. I'm really just trying to make very small sustainable changes. I'm okay with the weight coming off a very small amount at a time because I am doing it in a manner that's going to be easy for me to maintain it in the long run. So when I do these 10 day challenges, and that's really not a very good name for it because the whole point is that it's not supposed to be that challenging. It's supposed to be something that's very feasible and very attainable by just picking one or two things that we can focus on, one or two healthy habits that we can focus on for a short period of time, 10 days. And this time around, I was just focused on two things having to do with nutrition, tracking my food, and staying at 1,700 calories. 1,700 calories is a 15% deficit for me. And if you wanna know more about how I came up with that number and my journey with uh, looking into my metabolism and trying to heal my metabolism after years of dieting, I will link a video up here where you can go and watch me talk all about that. And um, the 1,700 calories obviously were because I'm trying to ship away and, and lose a little bit of the weight that I've gained. But tracking my food is about more than just making sure I'm hitting my calorie goal each day. I think that by keeping track of what we're eating, it can be a good resource whenever we want to go back and look at that objectively and see if there are any patterns or any habits that might be um, creeping into our way of eating or might be keeping us from reaching our goals. That's what happened to me um, recently. I went back and looked at what I was eating during my previous 10 day challenge when I did not lose any weight despite the fact that I was working out a lot more. And I noticed that I was eating a lot of like treats and a lot of processed things and you know chips and cheese balls and stuff like that. I was staying within my caloric goal, but I was eating a lot of those types of foods. And even though that shouldn't make a difference where the scale is concerned, it does make a difference in the way that I feel. You know, I think it makes a difference nutrition wise for my body because the calories I was using to consume those things are then calories I can't use to fill my body with nutritious foods that are macro and micronutrient dense. Now you guys know that I am all about balance. Nobody's perfect and you're still gonna see me eat Cheetos from time to time. I'm just saying this time around, I tried to eat less Cheetos. So I guess you could say that was sort of a micro goal, like a micro number three goal, but really still the only two rules that were hard and fast were 1700 calories a day and tracking what I ate. So it was a good 10 days. I posted two videos during that time. One was just a what I eat in the day. And then I also vlogged the last three days and showed you some of the stuff that I was eating. So it was great. One of the things that I did not do this time around though was any kind of rigorous exercise. All I did was walk. For some reason, I just wasn't feeling like going to the gym and I wasn't feeling like getting a jog. The weather was not great for jogging anyway because it was really cold and rainy. I did manage to get outside and walk. I did manage to jump on my treadmill and walk. And when I go back and I look at my steps in my tracker, I noticed that in that 10 day period compared to another 10 day period of similar similar days, I got more steps. You know, normally on days when I would be resting and I would only get five, six or 7,000, I was getting this time around more like seven or eight or even 9,000. And then on days when I was really, really active, I would normally get 11 or 12,000 steps. I was hitting like 14,000 or 15,000 steps because I was just trying to get, you know, those extra walks in and I, I was enjoying them. I would go out and put my headphones in and listen to a podcast or something 
something like that. I was just really enjoying that. So put a pin in that because we're going to come back to it because I want to talk about exercise versus movement here in just a minute. But I know some of you want to know if I saw movement on the scale. And the answer is yes. The last time I weighed in, I was 149.8. So I was back in the 140s. That's the decade I like to be at, somewhere between 140 and 150. I used to think I needed to be in this little bitty four pound range, probably because of Weight Watchers. Well, I think landing somewhere in a 10 pound range is much more reasonable for me when it comes to maintaining. That's me. I do like to be in the lower end of that, you know, just because I think it gives me a little wiggle room before I'm in the danger zone. So I am kind of trying to whittle away at these few pounds that are within my 10 pound range so I can kind of be more in the 143, 144, 145 range. So my last weigh in, I was 149.8. Yesterday when I weighed in, after this 10 day challenge was complete, I was 148.8. So I lost one pound. And that brings my October total weight loss to one pound. <laughs> now, is that sensational? No, but I really feel like what I'm doing is just healthier for my mindset, you know? I'm not going crazy thinking about all the things I can't fit within a very restricted caloric goal. I have enough calories to play around with and I go back to eating maintenance calories often enough that I don't feel that need to binge as often as I used to. Once I get to maintenance, it's a lot more sustainable because I've been eating very close to maintenance calories even when I've been trying to lose weight. So I think it's gonna be much easier for me to just sustain this way of eating and this way of you know, living once I get to a number that I'm a little more comfortable at. Now, I realize that the weight that I'm wanting to lose is vanity weight, okay? Um, I know that there's not a medical reason for me to need to lose weight. I recently went for my yearly doctor's appointment, and according to my doctor and all of my blood work, I am a healthy 37-year-old female. This is just something that I want to do because I have recently been at that weight. It's not something I was sitting at 20 years ago. You know, it's not like an unrealistic, I want to weigh what I weighed when I was in high school, which for me, that's unrealistic, okay? Um, it's just that I, I felt really comfortable and really great at that weight last year when I was maintaining it. And it also puts me on the lower end of my maintenance range of 140 to 150 and going into the holidays. That's just the place where I want to be. As I said, this time around, I didn't really do any rigorous exercise. I didn't go to the gym and I didn't go for any jogs. I did notice that I got a lot more steps. I don't know why, but I was just really feeling the walking this time around. I've always loved walking. To me, walking is not exercise. Walking is therapeutic. It's very cathartic for me. I enjoy going back and forth to the school with my kids. I enjoy getting those extra steps in in the afternoon, even around the house. When the weather wasn't nice, I hopped on the treadmill, put my, um, iPad in front of me. I mean, I'd much rather be outside, but I don't know. I just like the feeling of walking. And I am very fortunate that I have always had a job or an occupation in life where getting steps is not a problem for me. While I was teaching full time, it was not uncommon for me to have, you know, 10 or 11,000 steps pretty easily with just my regular daily activity on the job. And even though I'm only teaching part time right now, working in the house gets me lots of activity. You know, I'm up and around, I'm doing the laundry, I'm going up and down the stairs, I'm, you know, cleaning. I'm running errands, I'm pushing the cart through the store and you know, just doing all the things. It made me wonder if for me, I need to flip the switch from thinking about exercise to just thinking about movement because I have noticed that whenever I do that, I'm a lot happier. <laughs> There are people who love working out. My, my husband is one of them. He goes to classes in the morning. He likes the competition of it. He likes the community of it. It's something that really fulfills him. And I think that's great. There are people who really like being in a sport. There are people who really like taking classes. And I enjoy those things from time to time, but it's more of something I feel obligated to do for the sake of taking care of my body and not something I really enjoy. And that's why I think moving forward, those things are gonna be minimal for me. I like going for a jog when the weather's nice and I don't mind getting out and jogging a mile or even two, that's something I'll probably continue to do, but I'm just never gonna be a gym rat. And I'm finally realizing that I don't have to be in order to be fit and be healthy. You know, I think that having regular daily movement in my life is, is going to be enough. I think about my mom. My mom is 74, so she grew up mainly in the 50s and early 60s. And my mom never had to seek out any kind of intentional exercise, you know? <laughs> That's not to say it didn't exist. I know that, 
you know, diet fads and gizmos and gadgets and diet programs and special foods are things that people have been peddling for, you know, ages and ages. I do think it's a bigger industry now than it's ever been before. But for the most part, people in my mom's era of growing up, like they didn't really need to seek out additional exercise. It's just their regular day-to-day -day movement was enough to keep them healthy and fit. Nowadays, I think some people don't have any choice but to seek out extra intentional exercise because they have jobs that are fairly sedentary. And it makes me wonder if that's one of the curses of our technological age, you know, because there are some people who can work remotely, like they can sit at their desk at home and have all their meetings and have all their conferences and send all their documents. Whereas 30 years ago in an office setting, you would still have had to get up from your desk to do all of that, right? But I am very fortunate that I have an occupation as a mom and as a teacher that I love and that keeps me moving. And I'm starting to be okay with the fact that that movement, along with a little bit of intentional movement that I enjoy from time to time, is going to be enough. I don't need to kill myself in the gym to be um, the healthy weight that I want to be and to be the fitness level that's going to allow me to um, carry out all of my duties as a mom and a wife and a teacher and a friend and all of those things. Speaking of movement, it's time for me to go get my kids. <laughs> so I'm going to have to drop it right here and just hope that this makes sense to you guys. Um, I, don't, I feel like I'm kind of rambling and not making my point very well, but hopefully I, I put it out there. But the takeaways are my 10-day challenge went well. My October weight loss was one pound, so that makes my total weight loss since I started out trying to chip away at this most recent weight gain over the summer. That makes my total weight loss since July six pounds. So I'm very happy with that. I know that it's not sensational. I know that it's not drastic. If you're looking for that channel that's gonna help you lose 10 pounds in a month, I'm not it. <laughs> you can keep looking. I'm that person who's gonna lose slow. Not even steady, just slow. <laughs> But I think if you're in this game long enough, everybody eventually gets to this point, right? Where the weight comes off slower and where you really have to start thinking about maintenance and not just about a number on the scale or a size that you fit into, but about doing things for your body that make you feel good, you know, and that are um, healthy and that make you feel more fit. So that's what I have for you guys today. Thanks so much for watching. Leave me a comment. Let me know how you guys are doing. And I will be continuing to chip away at my weight just a little bit at a time and I'll continue to check in with you guys. See you soon. Bye.